We always deliver on our promises and we promise you, you are gonna love this recipe. Today, we're showing you how to make Salisbury steaks and a homemade gravy. So these are just your typical Salisbury steak ingredients. Because we're doing a homemade gravy, you're gonna cut that onion in half, save half for the gravy, which we're gonna show you how to make later. Now this is a pro tip when it comes to onion going into the Salisbury steak. I like to grate it in there. It adds a delicious texture and you don't get those chunks of onion in there. So even people who don't like onion, you won't even know it's in there. It's just gonna add a little gentle onion flavor. You might be looking at this and being like, Maddie and Kiki, what the heck? Why are you putting mayo into your Salisbury steaks? That is because I ran out of eggs. You can swap in mayo because mayo just acts exactly like how an egg acts. It binds everything together. This recipe actually serves eight people. We're gonna be making eight different portions here and you might be thinking, how? It's one pack of ground beef. But the item that is what stretches this recipe are oats, believe it or not. You put in some water, let it sit for a little bit, and then it turns into this delectable velvety texture that A, stretches the meat, and B, it doesn't add any flavor. You don't need to be like, ew, is that gonna taste like granola? <laughs> Absolutely not. And then get right in there with your hands. We always say the best tools in the kitchen are your hands themselves. Okay, so now that it's mixed, we're gonna portion it out into patties and all we're gonna do is cut it down the center, then cut those centers into half. So you can see now we have four equal halves and those still look pretty big. So we're gonna take those halves and cut them in half and now we have eight equal portions. That's such a pro tip. Then one's not bigger than the other, you know they're gonna be roughly the same size. I don't know if you had a scale if they'd be exact, but they're pretty close. Okay, if you're getting out of scale, this recipe ain't for you probably, okay? <laughs> Those look so good. And the good thing about adding oats too is that they don't shrink. Yes, that, that is so true. So unlike if you were doing straight meat where the fat is lost into the grill, the oats absorb the fat so they remain the same size. These things are called Salisbury steaks and anyone who's made steak before knows you gotta season the outside of the steak. So taking it to that next level, we're gonna add seasoning to the outside of the Salisbury steaks. This is what separates these out from being burgers. Yes. Really. If, you were, if these were, you could just stop here, grill them up, have them on a bun. But the fact that you're adding steak spice to the outside, that is what's gonna give them more of a steak flavor and trick people into thinking, it's kind of like a steak. Mm -hmm. Right now, these steaks are very flimsy. So in order to be able to transfer them properly from the pan to the grill, we like to freeze them for about 20 minutes. They're not gonna be completely frozen through, but they're just gonna be frozen enough on the outside that transferring them over to the grill is easy peasy. You could use a regular can of gravy. I love canned gravy. There yeah. Me There's too. nothing wrong with canned gravy. But we wanted to show you how simple it is to make a flavorful yet cheap gravy. I wanna zero in on one of the ingredients here. Do you get guess which one I'm gonna zero in it's on? It's the sliced mushrooms. She will not stop talking about sliced mushrooms in a can. How did you know? Maybe because that's all you talk about. <laughs> canned mushrooms will like change your life. I don't know about that. Not only do they save a step in the kitchen because you don't have to chop them up. Or wash them. Yeah. Okay, sorry, two steps in the kitchen. They also are super cheap. Because they're in a can, they go through somewhat of a cooking process to make sure everything's like sterilized. So you're like halfway there. It's like half cooked, half pickled in a way. <laughs> Without the vinegar. It sounds gross, but trust us. They're We're not vegetable. selling it hard. <laughs> you got some butter in there. We're starting out heavy with some butter and oil, nice. Then the onions go in. See, that's the other chop, that's the other half of the onion. I hate recipes that are like a tablespoon of onion and then you're like, what do I do with the rest of this onion? That, yep. that, on, that full onion gets used in this recipe. Then we're adding in some flour to make a roux. All a roux is, it sounds fancy, but all it's gonna do is thicken up the gravy for us. Those mushrooms are in there, cooking that out. So that ingredient is actually more of a higher end ingredient. It's sherry, but if you don't have sherry, that's not gonna make or break this recipe. You could add beer or you could just omit it entirely. So then there was just some soy sauce and some balsamic vinegar. Most people have that in their pantries rounding out those flavors in the gravy. And adding to a dark look that's supposed to mimic like a beef gravy. Simple, cheap, flavorful. That's the math I like to do. Yeah. <laughs> so by the time that it took us to make our gravy, the Salisbury steaks have been hanging out in the freezer and the exterior has been frozen. 
Now, I didn't want to cook all eight Salisbury steaks because it was just me and my partner having dinner. I decided to throw four into freezer bags and put them in the freezer for later. So now it's time to head out to the grill and I am gonna be using the wood fire flavor function here. So look where I store my pellets. So that is a great idea. You're storing them in another grill, keeps them nice and dry. And it saves a step from going back into the house. These are definitely a recipe that could benefit from some wood fire flavor. Mm -hmm. Once the igniting process happens, the preheat happens, and then we're ready to get our Salisbury steaks onto the grill. I only grilled four of these, but I think eight could fit on there no problem. Oh, definitely, if you really wanted to. Ooh. Now, I had to check these after 10 minutes. We always say keep the lid down. If you're looking, you ain't cooking, but I am a peeker. I always get a peek. Yeah, you're bad at that, but I would have to too because they probably smelled so good. They look so good. Look at the color. Oh my goodness, the smell's coming out of that grill. They're bubbly. Oh yeah. You could have that on a bun with the gravy, like a mm -hmm. hot Salisbury Ooh. steak sandwich. Okay, and then we're going in with the gravy. Ooh. Does that not look so delicious? That could be a meal that you serve to guests. That's yeah. a great entertaining meal. No one would ever guess that that's budget friendly either. I know. Like who would think that I'm gonna say, I'm gonna save money on this recipe? No one, but just by looking at it. And you probably are like, I didn't know gravy was so easy and inexpensive to make. And nowadays, why spend money on a TV dinner that has a Salisbury steak in it when you can make it for less? And like, a gazillion times better. TV dinners used to be a way to save money. Not anymore. Now you'll see that um, I serve this with green beans because you gotta have some greenery on there. And I serve them with scalloped potatoes that I also made in the Ninja Woodfire Grill. If you want that recipe, check this video up next. I do. <laughs>